Me and Domino like to tell you the good word about Star Wars. Have you heard the good word about Star Wars? Uh, this is take three. I, I'm getting a lot of freaking interruptions today, and it's kind of bothering me at home. I'm like, I don't normally get this kind of interruptions when I'm out here. So, um, Star Wars, Force, Awa uh, Force Awakens, Rogue One, casting, uh, the character descriptions from the main cast have been revealed. We know Vader's in the movie is going to be used sparingly, but in key parts, so that's going to be pretty cool. James Earl Jones will be come back to uh, voice him. Uh, so starting off at the top, for the third time, <laughs> Jin Erser, uh, Felicia Lee Jones, one of our main characters, is a streetwise delinquent with a checkered past. Jin is captured by the Rebellion for being put into work or being put to work by them, she's knowledgeable of the crooked underbelly of the universe and a scrappy has scrappy survivor skills, so she could very well be the Han Solo of the universe, as they put. However, she has, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm, says don't become too attached because she becomes kind of a Joan of Arc in the story, which that's all but confirming when she says that. It's like, don't get too attached. She's dying. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's unfortunate. Um... But um, nothing we didn't really already know about the character. Moving on, we had Ca uh, Captain Cassian Andor, played by Diego Luna, who's a by-the-books rebel officer who serves as a handler and counterpoint to the Wild Ursa, a combat veteran who knows how to falsely execute a raid on the Empire. So we're going to get some military, like Zero Dark Thirty kind of style stuff going on, because this is a war film. We're going to get some stuff in this, so that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, he could have a tough time dealing with the Volatile Ursa, that line makes me think I might not like Felicity Jones' character, not, not Felicity Jones, but Felicity Jones' character, simply because I am fine with rebellion when you're rebelling against the big picture. I have an issue when you're rebelling, especially when you're a kid. When you're an adult, whatever, it's part of your character, but when you're a kid, not even a kid, like a teen or a young adult, when you're rebelling against not just the big picture, but the small, when you're rebelling against both sides, you're causing a problem for the, not just the step, not for the villains per se. You can cause a problem for the villains you want. You're causing a problem for the heroes too. It's like, no, look, if you want to stay out of it, fine. But when you're rebelling against everyone, not just them, but us, you're causing a problem for the betterment of the universe. So grow up a bit, please. The, the, there's a bigger picture you got to understand. So that might, I, I'm hoping I'm wrong. Maybe she won't annoy me on that sense, but who knows? Uh, then we have, and his name is pronounced Chirut Mwell, played by Donnie Yen. An interesting addition to the Star Wars mythos, as Chirut is not a Jedi, but has devoted himself to studying their ways. This has enabled him to overcome his blindness and become a formidable warrior in his own right. That pretty much says he's Force-sensitive. He can use the Force, kind of like Miles Kanata. He can probably use the Force in several ways. And one way is to let him have an idea of his surroundings to the point where he can fight like Donnie Yen can fight. <laughs> so... Uh, it should be easy. Plus, you don't get Donnie Yen unless you're going to have him do some kick-ass fight stuff. Uh, fight, fight, fight work. Uh, combat choreography. Uh, then we have Baze Malbus, played by Jean Wen. So another Asian actor in this, so that's cool. I love I love diversing, uh, diversifying a cast. Chirrut's friend, but a skeptic when it comes to the ways of the Jedi. More likely, a, uh, more likely to trust a blaster and heavy armor over the Force. So kind of, you know, Hoke Religion, H Weapons uh, are no... Or, can't beat having a good blaster by your side. Um, and he's uh, described as Sancho Panza to Chirut's Don Quixote. I don't Quixot. I don't know don't know what the reference is, unfortunately. But that's cool. We got more diverse casts. Um, he, Donnie Yen's not gonna be on his own, so that's cool. Uh, Saw so, then we have Force Whitaker's character is finally revealed. Now, he is one of the few non-original characters in the Rogue One. He originally actually appeared in the Clone Wars animated series. So he's tying the Clone Wars and this together. So I think that's really cool. Uh, Saw Guerrera, for anyone who's a real nerd knows that. Uh, seasoned fighter, Guerrera opposed a separatist story in the Clone Wars and fought against the rise of the Imperial military. We see him using what appears to be a cane, maybe a rifle as a cane, or some sort of walking stick to help him walk, covered in armor. So it looks like he still fights in the resistance in some way, or fights in the rebellion in some way, or he's just kind of gone into hiding and just like, you know, what will you do when they get you? What will you become? What will they do when you, what will they, you do when they break you? You know, all that. So uh, he's, he's seen the horrors of war a lot longer than some of the, these other people have. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, Bohem Rook is 
uh, played by Riz Ahmed, almost the antithesis to Han Solo. Rook is similar hothead, but described as tense and volatile. So a little bit like Jin. Uh, but he's a, he's a more hothead. See, yeah, because you always compare it to Han Solo. Han Solo is always, I mean, he can be a little tempered sometimes, but uh, like when he, someone's getting on his nerves, but he's always was really the cool kind of, okay, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's think this through. Let's think this through. Come on. Like I could get away with murder. Come on. Hell, I did get away with murder in a bar. Um, you know, you remember that time I head to this? Uh, yeah, that didn't happen. I don't care what anyone says. That didn't happen. He's a master techni technician, though. Not tactician, but technician. So he's the tech guy. So unlike the Millennium Falcon, he said his ship probably could actually be reliable. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, then we have Bodhi... Uh, no, uh, K2SO, which is the Alan Tudyk character, which unfortunately means he's not the pilot. He's not going to be using the... I am a leaf on the wind. Watch as I soar. I mean, come on. Any of us Firefly fans would have loved him to be the pilot and say that line. But no, he's a mocap character. He's a droid. He's uh, it's K2 for sure is his name. This is hulking robot is more like Chewbacca than C3PO. In fact, you actually heard him uh, being compared to the anti uh, antithesis of C3PO uh, or BB-8. R2D2 was always a bit cranky though, so he's kind of like Chopper from the Re Rebel series. Uh, and I haven't watched it, but I know the droid. It's basically a King Tinker's version of R2, sort of. Uh, an outspoken, powerful, secured droid, K2 is seeking redemption for past wrongs, an intriguing direction to take for a robot, which, yeah, most robots don't really have a concept or re understanding or caring for terms of, like, sinning or feeling guilt. I mean, C-3PO does, and even R2 does, but, um, I mean, they feel emotions. They do because they are sentient in their own way. Um, BB-8 is a good example. You see BB-8 feeling happy and sad. Uh, C-3PO getting t uh, testy or angry or something like that. R2 being all irritable. So you do see that. But to have a droid with a sense of honor and wanting to correct and wanting to restore that honor a bit, that's interesting in my mind. So that'll, that'll be cool to see. They had the last two, Gal a gallon or so, Mad Mickelson. Jin's a strange father. That was confirmed. He actually confirmed that. They, uh, but whatever. And genius sought by Empire and Rebel Alliance alike. Compared to uh, uh, compared to Oppenheimer, one of the architects of the first atomic weapons, it's not long. It's not a long leap to resume Galen and some connection to the creation of the Death Star. More importantly, why did he abandon his daughter? The rumors we are hearing about him probably being like the one of the creators or architects of the Death Star. It turns out it's true. He is. And you know what? That's pretty cool. Uh, would we have preferred to see a villain? Absolutely. But, you know, it's Matt Nicholson. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, so it is, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays off. I'm just no, I'm keeping an eye on the dog. Uh, how that plays up. And why did he invent his art? Because he got involved with the Empire and didn't want to take her with him because he didn't want her corrupted by the Empire. I'd, I'd imagine that might be part of it. Uh, he definitely at least helped with the, uh, creation of the Duster. That's, that's gotta be, he, maybe he designed the plans, though I don't think so, um, because, what does it say, the Clone Wars, I'm, and I'm talking about the, because we saw the plans for the, de the de we saw the plans for the Death Star in the, in the Clone War, Attack of the Clones, in the little hologram that Genosian had, which, and that movie took place, I think, like, it takes place like five years before Revenge of the Sith, which takes place about, 30 years, 20, no, 20 years, give or take. 20 years after um, the Clone Wars uh, or, or Revenge of the Sith. So we're talking about time span about 22 years. No, you know what? He could have actually designed it. He could have. Given, given the time frame, this is taking place before the New Hope, obviously. Um, so less time than that, so maybe like 17, 18, 15 years, something like that. It's possible. No, it's not possible. So he actually could have legitimately designed the Death Star. It's very possible. But we'll have to wait to see how that happens. Last but not least, we have Ben Mendelsohn, who's playing director Orson K uh, Krennic. One of, the one of the main villains, actually, he's one of the villains, and um, one of the main villains, actually, of the piece. An ambitious Imperial officer who aims to crush the rebels with his squadron of Death Troopers. He's the leader of the Death Troopers. No, I'm the... Some of the other Lord Vader is, but um, no, he is a, he is the one who commands the Death Troopers, who are a pretty badass unit you know, of stormtroopers, from what we understand. Um, fiercely intelligent Emmy with almost limitless resources, a nightmare for scrappy heroes to be facing. So this is going to be interesting. Now that's all the main cast, not including any cameos. And obviously, it didn't say Vader, but we know Vader's in. They've confirmed Vader's in there. 
One thing is uh, Emperor Palpatine. Could he still maybe make a appearance of some kind? Hologram, voiceover, whatever. I think that's actually a possibility. As I did a video on that as well. Um, so I think that is actually quite the possibility we could see the Emperor pop up in some way. Some people are wondering if we could see Snoke to tie in with Force Awakens like he's in the back to tank. I don't believe so. Uh, Obi-Wan cameo at the end? Maybe. Um, that all depends if the if they are in fact going. I don't actually know. I, I don't think we would. I know we'll see. I know they're we're guaranteeing a Han Solo cam, a young Han Solo. That that's a given. Um, but we're gonna be a long ways off for anything Obi Wan or Jedi related because there's not there's not gonna be really any Jedi. Yoda and uh, Obi Wan are in hiding. They're not gonna come to the rescue. Um, this is happening. After Star Wars Rebels, I believe. So we're not. I don't think we're going to see much, if any, of the Rebels cast. But who knows? Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review setting, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. I got two other videos to do, so I'll be back in just a little bit.